I wasn't un unmuted. Okay, hello. Uh, it is my very first stream ever, and we are playing Doki Doki Literature Club, so really jumping right in there. <laughs> um, yeah. So just a note, I put it in the title of my stream and everything, but again, this game is very PG-13, or above that. I don't even know what it would be referred to as, but uh, it's very intense. I don't think we've really gotten to the intense stuff yet. So it'll probably look like a really like just cute little fun game and uh, looks are deceiving. Yeah. Um, so just make sure to take care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, all that good stuff. Um, and if you need a better list of trigger warnings and such, I'm sure there are plenty online that will be good. Hang on. There we go. My headphones from time to time just start flipping out. So. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Let me switch this Let's see okay yeah that's pretty good all right load game so i did not um post the second part of ddlc that i actually f uh, recorded a while ago because i ended up just never getting around to editing it um, so we're a little bit further along than if you've watched my video that I had on it out, but I mean nothing really happens it It's a pretty basic day. You just go on to day two uh, So anyway, we're writing a poem and I believe if I remember correctly We were doing the Yuri track instead of the Natsuki track because I really love Natsuki, but um, I, I Like I like Yuri a little bit more and I really I wanted to like see the inside of her track uh, all right, let's see. Let's do Starscape. I like that one. Uh, so the way this works, if you've never played it before, is you like pick words to like go with a certain girl and like write a poem. You don't actually write a poem. You just like I like the word entropy. You just like uh, put words together, I guess. Uh, tragedy. Oh, that was Sayori's. Okay. Um, feather. Ooh, crimson. Yes. Whoa. Oh, thank you for the new follow. I forgot that I, <laughs> I forgot that I put that as my sound. <laughs> Usually just kind of zoom through this sometimes. I don't, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference, honestly, unless you're like trying to go for a specific person, which like, I mean, I am, but also I don't really know if it matters. Besides, it's pretty easy to pick which ones are Yuri's. Um, audacious. Yeah, okay. Uh, if you don't remember or haven't played this before, uh, Yuri is the more like melancholic. Uh, uh, chill one. She's very shy. Natsuki is uh, very sassy and does not like the uh, main character. And then Sayori is very, very sweet and nice, and she's like the childhood friend of the main character. And then there's Monica, who is there. <laughs> Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more confident, co comfortable here over the last couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Ollie. To Sayori. Yo, Sayori. <laughs> Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. It's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood, but I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kind of hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Ah! Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then she turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. 
only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it. I can see you right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming into the classroom. So either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all of your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that only leaves one option. <laughs> I hate the little like kawaii noises. <laughs> I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Ahaha. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Oh, I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Ollie to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling the, a mischievous a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. <laughs> ah, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my books. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... Uh, there's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! <laughs> Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside of all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. Everybody in this game is a pick, pick me, and it's kind of funny. After all, she told you guys that she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. Uh, but uh, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> what was that? Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto her desk. Ow. What was... Eh? A cookie? Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I, I prayed... Uh, it's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. Ah ha ha ha. I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> That's a key. That was so That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. <laughs> Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. Mm. Sayori claps, suddenly claps her hand over her mouth. I bit my tongue. Hehe. <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Uh, oh, yours look really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. Yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do I think... Why do you think I gave you that one? Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Hehe. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arm around her. Ah, jeez. Oh, oh, it's a hug. That animation, like, threw me off. Oh, gosh. Oh, hello! <laughs> I need to find a better way to be able to, like, see the chat while I'm playing the game, but I don't have one yet, so <laughs> we're just kind of here. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off of her. All. Oh. <laughs> Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Oh, I... <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori, eh? Natsuka, Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the classroom. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything from her about being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? I don't think she... she has a... I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than, any, than all of us combined. <laughs> That's true. Excuse me? <laughs> Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. 
I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend, that's all. You're so strong-willed. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah. Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. Uh, that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I, I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? That wasn't where you played music as well, Monica. Uh, I, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play sometime for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Well, maybe once I get a bit better, I will. Yay! <laughs> that sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Ollie. Monica smiles sweetly. <laughs> this pose. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <sighs> don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I really love to, to have a chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! No, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I choose to leave out Siori's mischievous, mis mischievous escapade. I can't say that word correctly. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Siori somehow has already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hey, Yuri. Hey? Uh, I suddenly notice that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no. I was kind of just waiting for you. <laughs> uh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention yourself yet as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small pitcher from the shelf, the kind with the filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves is really contract contrasts her speaking mannerisms, especially because of her long legs. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. <laughs> okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go, then? Yeah. Hmm? Where are you two off to? Uh, we're just- Yuri was gonna go make some tea, so... I suddenly realize how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just- Fill in the water pitcher? Ah! Okay! Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's, uh... Monica, please mind your own business for once. <laughs> Damn. Or do you want me to or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involved Ollie in the club activities? Uh <laughs> my mouth gapes. I <laughs> I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> then let's go, Ollie. Ah Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Babe. <laughs> Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How can I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that, I, it made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri, it, I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to just judge people like that. Ollie. <laughs> How come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because... Nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head, I guess. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head, so your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Okay, motherfucking poet. <laughs> ah. No. <laughs> Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate for someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, um, <laughs> Yuri lifts her head. Ollie, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri, I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better, so... Anyway, <laughs> yeah, how we go? Yeah, Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. 
Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Ah, excuse me. Holly, do you like oolong tea? Ah, yeah. Any anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature in the kettle to 200 degrees. That is very hot for tea. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. It's tea. Phew. Are you kidding? It's tea. <laughs> I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others, even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. Woohoo! In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. If that's so. I was letting it show. <laughs> and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a bit more. Turns out it's not very hard for it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah! <laughs> That's great, Yuri. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. <laughs> Just don't push yourself too much. Always worrying about me, Ollie. It's very endearing. That's Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Ollie, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Dude. Would love to. Sitting on the floor is the best. Eh? Why is that? Because it's sitting on the floor. It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. Most likely because my... Ah. M my... Their posture, right? <laughs> Always hunched over like that while reading. Yep! That's it! <laughs> I have really terrible reading posture, bro. You wouldn't imagine. <laughs> so that's why we should sit on the floor. Not because of my huge badonkin dog. <laughs> oh my god. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag full of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Yori's candy radar. From Sayori's candy radar. I take it, since it, it'll go well with tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. Can't see too well. <laughs> Yuri slides closer until her shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Man. The main character is a horny motherfucker, I swear to God. Come on. There we go. Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Gah! <laughs> Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, they're on the floor, and she's just, like, chilling, and he's just freaking the fuck out. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Oh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish through opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Oh, that's that's okay. I won't take any. Eh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Even the dust looks, like, sexier in this... Damn, okay. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder harder of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Oh, God. <laughs> well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. And I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if the situation was completely normal, but that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Ah! Hello! Thank you. 
it's, it's a very jarring sound. I need to like turn it down or something. I don't even know. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did- did I just- Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Um... Ollie... Sorry! I guess I shouldn't have done that. Ah, that's... well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but, you know. Yeah! <laughs> oh, that's all it was. Yeah. Then, you don't need to stop or anything. <laughs> Damn. I see. The situation has gotten really tense now. Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell by just her expression that she can't focus either now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I raise my arm. Ah. Like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Okay, everyone. Ooh, ah. Ugh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Oh, there it goes again. All right, there we go. <laughs> my headphones died again. It's time to share poems. Ollie, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. Spell is abruptly broken. I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. <laughs> this is so awkward. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without as so much as a word between us. I get the feeling that this is something neither of us will ever have the courage to bring up. Yeah. Who should I show my poem to first? Let's start with Natsuki. I like her poems. Hmm. Well, it's not really any worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better th either. Phew. Huh? Phew what? Ah, uh, well, something that isn't a train wreck, so I'll take it as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you- Wait, maybe that was a compliment? Uh, glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh, something telling me Natsuki completely missed the point. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Eh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wa la wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. But honestly, how can someone so... Er, Fluffy spends so much time with someone like you. It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she'd probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. Alright, here we go. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute, sweet singing voice. I heard her singing is my favorite love. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang my the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has lots of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start like to start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not like friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if she doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross, so she's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm gonna tell everyone. It's good. How do I get out of it? This is so... this is good. Uh... Ah! No! How do I get out? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. 
I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like this? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter, it can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid people will find out, they'll make fun of you or think less of you. That just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy? I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. <laughs> Let's see how long it And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. I will. All right, who are we gonna do next? Let's do Monica and get her out of the way. Hi again, Ollie. How's the writing going? All right, I guess I'll take that. As long as it's not going to be bad. Oh, as long as it's not going bad, I'm happy you're, that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon enough you'll come out with a masterpiece. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share? Uh, want to share what you wrote for today? Sure. Here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right, this one's good. Feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. But when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside of her. Mm -hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what's going on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant I didn't. I wish she didn't keep to herself so much. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Eh, you completely misunderstood. I Calm down, I'm just kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that, I guess. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the, the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveform, waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sign, cosine, tangent, like, a play, like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing vinyl on pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Me. Okay. Hmm. Uh. Load. Did it. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Hmm. Even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. Kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how I do to spend your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling. Or a conversation with the reader. So, putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know when you might need to change your mind. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, 
Is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. <laughs> okay, well, I did save my game, so... I suppose... That'll work. Uh, who should I show my tune to next? Let's see Yuri last. Do say Yuri. Woo! I like this one, Ollie. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Mm, let me think. I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> it's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad, but that's just... But that's why I just go by my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. Not sure that's exactly how it works. And again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? I love Sayori so much. Aw, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. You're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep it in mind. Well, whatever. Anyways, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems too. There's a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most, but sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help you give the rain cloud a little hug. And make a nice happy rainbow. Yori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh, it is. Maybe I'm getting better expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Ollie. And my favorite. Uh, the best. I love her. I should go write that down then. You should you can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's a secret place where I keep all my dreams. Like bo little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like bundles of kitten like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles all in a row. My collection makes me a lot of friends, each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friends feel a certain way, down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams, friend after friend, more bottles, deeper and deeper my finger goes. I was exploring a dark cave, discovering secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies, digging and digging and scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. Friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up and I'm in and come my friends. They in they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frankly I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends. My friends who aren't smiling, they're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. I like this one. I forgot about this one, but I like it. Holy crap. Sorry, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write my best poem ever? Yeah, but, I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot, and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that? It's almost kind of creepy. <laughs> creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to be you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. I've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? Hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. Oh, <laughs> no, this is not technically my first time. Well, okay, it's my first time playing, but it's not my first time, like, like I, I was very obsessed with this game a few years ago. Uh, so I, I know everything that happens, but. It's my first time, like, actually playing through with, like, my own computer. <laughs> I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Ahaha, <laughs> don't get ahead of yourself. So you always, always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times, but seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. 
should I show my poem to next? Yuri. I... <sighs> Yuri is not my favorite. I think Sayori is my favorite. I love Sayori so much. Just love her. But Yuri is my favorite, like, path to go down, so that's why I'm doing hers. At some point, I may replay, like, maybe on my own and do the Natsuki path. We'll see. Because um, I like her little, like, anime thing, but... Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. You liked it? Holly, this one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick this up so quickly? Just yesterday I was trying you- I was telling you all kinds of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. Blech. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. Probably sounds really stupid, <laughs> but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really, I don't believe it. I really only write for myself, and besides, people would just laugh at me. You really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even when you- even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. Wonder why. Anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote today? Yeah, I do. <laughs> if it's with you. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I'd noticed a strange tendency. My strange tendencies as an und un oh, unordinary human. I struggled to read her writing. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that the raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was a symptom. I bred the hungry curiosity, the raccoon, and urge. The moon increments, increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife, the very same light that glistens in the hands of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft, the raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me, and say it's that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so the bread is so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. Rush of blood, a classic Parlovian? Pavlovian? Pavlovian? I don't really know what that is. Conditioning. I slice the bread and I feed myself again. Oh god, she makes me so sad. <clears throat> like I said, if you uh struggle with like self-harm and such like, this is uh definitely one to be careful about and take care of yourself while you're watching so she is <laughs> she makes me so sad anyway um i was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's <laughs> i can see that a lot more metaphorical oh, it's cold in my room <laughs> the fit check is immaculate but i am cold <laughs> sweater it is. A lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style, using the poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying my emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Huh, that's funny. Didn't Atsuki also write something about that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Huh? She did? Yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anybody. She's right! I mean, does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have that in common. That's interesting. To me, she seems like the type of person who would make fun of my hobbies. But I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Uh, please don't tell her I said that. <laughs> don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. 
Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. Might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad you're such a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening, and there really aren't many people like you, Ollie. That's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would be so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling, and you're too thanked for that. It's nothing, really. <laughs> Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Oh, and we're back. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we could put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. Okay. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Sayori has been working on posters, and I've designed some pamphlets that we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? Uh, Monica. Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performances. Wait, I think I read that wrong. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. The cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Sayori's putting it all over the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Sayori, who's been coloring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't, you didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Well, I did. You really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no, it's not a bad idea. I just, I didn't sign up for this, you know? There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. I, imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no, Sayori, I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a few days ago. It's a lot to ask of them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're going to, we're the only person, uh, no. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. We start the event and each put on a good performance, and it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feeling that brought you in here in the first place? You know you do. I know we all do. And if it take and off no, and if all it takes is standing in front of a room for two minutes and reciting for a poem, then I know you can do it. <laughs> Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Sayori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't really think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but Looks like Natsuki doesn't really have any arguments left. <laughs> okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright! Phew! Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. I, I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha! That's everyone! You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway... Let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice re reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? No. Don't worry. I'll start out to I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Can I go next? Ah, of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands before the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing those words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural at it? I glance around me. 
Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Fiori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the rec recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That, that was so good, Monica. Ah, thank you very much. I was just looking. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I I'll go next. Oh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called. Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. Do it, Yuri. It's called After Image of a Crim Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around, as if she is bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save this situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. Yuri, that was really good! Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori so hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled. Any. Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Uh, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best way. I see. I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. As if I were to read if I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this was what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. Like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori! <laughs> even Ollie liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does it even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you very nicely. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems with yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. It might need a little bit more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I, I know what you mean. That's... Well, I've been practicing this kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay. Now who's next? Natsuki? <laughs> don't make me go before Ollie. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Ollie lower everybody's standards a little bit before I have to do it. Ah! I have the hiccups. <laughs> Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection as to what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Alright then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting? Mm -hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears for a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Oh well. You at least feel prepared enough to recite the poem in front of the other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. 
I can put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. <laughs> That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have ideas of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. Makes me really happy. Ah, uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working up really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we're, we're, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> all right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. Must be a little nice, though. Well, ah. <laughs> how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Ollie, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's just go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was facing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. Like, I would like how we get to... I mean, Sayori fumbles with her words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked you to walk home with you. Huh? Why, well, what would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> well. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. I would walk home with Sayori. Because Sayori's... My little... I love her so much. But my character, at the way this is going, would probably walk home with Yuri. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna choose Sayori because I want to. I love her so much. Sayori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh? But she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her at the club every day. Besides, you and I, you always seem really fun. You always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Ollie. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so. Sayori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure out you sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. Conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Sayori to care about so much. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up for today. Um, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I will hopefully stream soon-ish. But yeah, I uh, I think this is like day two or three. I think it's day three. Um, but yeah, it's great to start streaming. I've never streamed before, so this is new. Um, but yeah, 